Hey guys, sorry I haven't made any videos in a while. It's been a hectic uh, time here in my life. Uh, super busy. But here's another video. Just uh, thought I'd uh, pop one out quickly this uh, this weekend while I've got some free time. Um, today I'm just going to be showing you how to make this uh, this little control page where you can uh, maybe do like an RGB controller which has these faders which control you know the red, the green, and the blue. And you can and if you had like an RGB LED, you'd be able to you'd change the amount of blue and green and red. Um, and then you could have an on and off. I'm building some on and off switches and some toggle switches. Um, so let's uh, let's go into how you just need to install this or, or test this out and play with it. Uh, you just need to go to my GitHub and uh, find the uh, folder which is the Hack Seven MQTT to, to Web Pages Part Two, and in there will be one file which is this control.php, and here is the file. Uh, we're going to be going through that in just a moment. Um, but just wanted to show you some cool stuff. Um, so before we had the dashboard, we could see all of the data that was being sent and received, and it would show up in here. Um, but with this, you don't see anything. So when you move stuff, you just see it move. You don't see what the data is. Uh, so if you do want to see the data, uh, you just have to right click inside Chrome and say inspect, and it'll open up this little panel here. And in this, you just hit the console. And uh, those, now you can see the messages. So you can see that we logged in, this happened earlier, and uh, we got access granted, and now we can publish stuff. So every time we, we move this, you'll see it'll, it'll do a publish publish granted, and you'll see that number will indicate, keep on in, like going up as we were sending messages out. And you can see here, these are all the messages we received, because um, this was subscribed to the topic that this one was sending to. Um, I'm not really going to be explaining how HTML works. Uh, one of my friends, Quentin, uh, has done a really good job of that in his YouTube channel. So I'll link, um, I'll put an annotation and a link below to his YouTube channel on both um, JavaScript and uh, HTML. But this is basically all that this code is. It's some, some HTML and some JavaScript. So it starts off with, uh, and this is a PHP file that's actually very important. So it starts off with, we have some PHP code, which runs first. And this just checks to make sure that we're running inside of, um, that there is a variable called run, and it's equal to test um, dot code. And the reason for that is so that you'll see when we run everything, we do this question mark P. And that means that if you just, for instance, go to uh, control um, control dot PHP, for instance, it will just say 404 not found, even though the file is really there. Um, and that's because it's dying immediately uh, as it's not running, right? So um, then the next thing is document type HTML, and then there's some HTML tags. Again, I'm not really going to explain too much what that is. I'm going to move more into, uh, I kind of assume that you have an understanding of basic JavaScript. Um, and if you've watched some of Quentin's videos, you will. Uh, so here we go. So it starts off with this function called initialize, well, int in it. And this is basically gets, this gets called on load by some other code further down. We'll, I'll go back to that. Um, and it calls this function called do connect. And on do connect is this. And here it basically creates a WebSocket connection to the whatever uh, name is. So whatever you have, if it's an IP address or domain name or whatever this is, it's going to connect, a, it's going to cry and create a connection to it. On, uh, on port 8080. And uh, then it, you have to define a bunch of uh, functions for it. So when, it, when the connection is opened, when the connection is closed, when there's a message received on the connection, and when there's an error, what, what function do you want it to call? And then we just have, I have on, on open. And what that does is it just logs connected. As you can see on the side, it printed out connected. And if it were to disconnect for some reason, it would print out disconnected inside of the instead of the console, and that's what that console log is. That's just like console print almost. Uh, the same with unclose, we just have a print um, or log disconnected. Okay, then we have it on message. On message um, gets called every time you receive some data on the WebSockets connection. And in our case, what it does is it logs the message uh, so we can read it. Um, and then it um, checks to see if there's any JSON. And if there is, um, this JSON object called mode, and the, it's equal to login, which I think you should be able to see there. So when you connect to the WebSocket server, immediately the server sends back this, this JSON um, saying basically mode login. And so then the, the page knows, OK, he's, he, the, the server's wanting my login. And then here we've got, um, we basically have it immediately sends back some data, and it sends back mode login, and with this, this thing called WS 
token, um, which is getting a, a session token from PHP. So what happens is when you log in with PHP, you create this, well, this session token gets created. Um, and then when the page is finished loading on your device, your device uses that token to connect back to the server. And this is basically, this token is used to figure out how you are you. Because the WebSocket connection is completely separate to the web, the web, the normal web connection, so we don't know who the user account is. Like, and this just basically says, okay, this guy's logged in, and and this token refers back to um, to your user account. And this token changes every time you log in; it's never the same. Uh, on error, just prints out error and then closes the connection. Uh, then we have this thing here, which is window add event listener. And this is what calls that, that function earlier we called, which was init, um, on load. So once the page is fini finished loading, it will then con try and connect to the WebSockets connection, but only after the page is finished loading. Okay, so now we're getting to the functions that I essentially made. They're not required for the WebSocket connection, but these make it easier to talk to our um, MQTT to WebSocket bridge. And the first one is this function called sendSub. And sensor basically, uh, we can we give it a topic. When you call it, you basically say that the topic is something, and then it will try and subscribe to that topic. So here it generates some JSON, which is that basically it tells the the bridge like, hey, I want to subscribe to this topic, and well, here's the topic I want to subscribe to, and the the what I want to do is subscribe. And then I've got the same thing here for the send pub. It does the same thing. This one has a topic and the message, so it's the topic you want to subscribe, well, you want to publish to, and the message you want to send. And it just again generates the JSON string necessary um, to send. If you want to look at what those strings look like, you can see here if we put in something like hello, um, hello world, and we say hi, you'll see that um, that in here it generated this. This is the this is the you know the string that it generated, which was this mode publish topic and the message, right? And um, if you look here, you would, I mean, so if you look here, you'll see that's what this is doing. It's generating that string. It's sending the mode, setting the mode to publish, setting the topic and the message, and then sending it through the WebSocket connection. And then next are two functions that I just built um, for this page, this control page. And the one handles this section, and the other one handles this section. Um, so the first one is the send RGB, and it says color value. And then what it does is it goes and, and it basically generates some JSON code as well as uh, basically sends this, you know, the well, fires off the send pub function um, to the hello world topic and then with, with this JSON code that it generated. And it's basically generating, um, if we look here, we should be able to see it or not for some reason. Um, let's do that. There we go, you'll see it. So what it's generating is this JSON that is red, um, basically equals 170, right? And you can do the same thing for the green and the blue, and you'll see those will appear here. So there's now it's sent out green 80, you know, blue 77, and that's because of the position on the slider. The number is the position of the slider and, um, you know, the color. And so to do all of that, I just used, I used one function and I uh, just have the color and the value. And then if you look um, further down, which is this is the code that generates the red, the green, and the blue uh, sliders, you'll see that I have unchanged. So when the slider gets moved, I have it fire off that function, um, which then basically I say the color for this is red and this value. So this dot value will get the position on the slider. And then if you're using, let's say, a uh, Arduino to do the RGB control of the, uh, the light, you would, you know, the um, PWM that it does is 0 to 255. Um, but if you're using something, let's say, like an ESP8266, which we'll have some tutorials in the future on, um, this you might need to change to 1024. So uh, that way you can just make the, the slider. And then the, this, this value is where the slider starts off. So if we refresh the page, you'll see all of the sliders start off at 90. Um, and then the next function that I have, or the last function, is the send button press. And again, I just have inside the value, and I have it, again, generate some JSON, send it to the same topic. And in this case, it's state and value. And then if you look here, you'll see there's the send button press uh, one, 
zero and t. So how it, how it works is when you hit this, this, it'll send a one. And if you look here, you'll see it state one. And when you hit this off button, you'll see it will send a state zero. And if you see, hit the T, well, the toggle, it'll send a T. Um, and that's basically an, an just a short overview of, um, oops, of, um, of what that code is. And, and I'm basically wanting to hope, well, I hope that you guys are able to, to take this code um, from the Wikipedia, I mean, not from, uh, Wikipedia, from GitHub, have a look at it and see what's going on. And hopefully this video kind of explains, um, I know it's a bit fast, um, because there's a lot of stuff, uh, what what it does and kind of figure out how it works. And then as well as looking at my friends Quinton's videos and uh, and seeing how you can make your own um, control panels, you know, which have tons of buttons like, and you can easily change this button and make it, um, you know, whatever you want. So like for me, um, my control panel looks looks like this. As of right now, I'm still working on it, but it's got you know power strip controls for uh, my kitchen. Uh, I can see the front door video camera. I can unbuzz the the front door, um, stuff like that. I can control some RGB LED lights, um, stuff like that, and there's some other outlets. So yeah, so with this with this base knowledge you get from from this video and from here, you should be able to figure out how to how to build and make your interface look really pretty. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Um, and uh, subscribe, because as I am definitely going to be making more tutorials as I get more free time towards the end of the year. So uh, thanks very much. Bye.